If you are transgendered, the military may be a good place for you because they will let you out of deployment and pay for your sex change. Uh, and they will also let you out of physical fitness standards. Here is a new document, newly released, showing that the U.S. military's policy on transgender members. It includes provisions to skip deployments, receive indefinite waivers on grooming, physical fitness, and drug testing because they're going to pump you full of drugs. They have a plan for it. This is the plan. So if you're not trans, you go on deployments, you adhere to physical fitness standards, and you deal with your sad body as it is. Uh, but if you're trans, though, you can use the military health care as a clinique counter to make yourself whatever your little heart desires on taxpayer dollars. Now, I'm going to show you this document, but I'd like to sort of frame it this way, like as a thought experiment. Let's think for a second. Why did Chelsea Manning, a trans person who served in the military as Bradley Manning, uh, um, as a man, have their sentence commuted by Obama for stealing classified documents when Julian Assange still remains in indefinite torture, facing extradition to the United States? Um, Assange did not steal the material he published. Manning admitted to stealing it. He freely admitted it. Uh, did Manning get off easier, maybe, because of gender ideology? Now, I do not want to say that Chelsea Manning got off easy. Chelsea Manning did not. Uh, they also were tortured. They also were went through hell. Um, and I very much appreciate what Chelsea Manning did. But my question is, would Julian Assange stop being pursued so hard if there was a transgender element is one was one an easier experience than the other again these are both both of them have awful experiences and did so i think in the public interest um but and i'm also not saying chelsea manning should not have had their sentence commuted i do believe that they should have um, i believe that what they did was brave and in the public interest and i'm grateful for it i just think we should think this through i'm reading manning's book right now it is a mix of like memoir about being a gay boy and then a trans woman mixed in with patri patriotic ideology um, about not being silent about war crimes. So again, this is just my question because as I was reading this, I'm thinking about this book I'm reading about Chelsea Manning and their experience being someone with gender dysphoria in the military and thinking maybe this could have made it a little bit easier. I don't know if the transition had come earlier. So let's look at the policy. They say that now the military must provide what they deem medically necessary, transgender hormones and surgery. Well, how do they come up with this medically necessary part? They're using, for their standards, WPATH, which is the World Professional Association for Transgender Health Guidelines. Uh, take a look at all of, you know, some at some of the other uh, sources that they're using, but WPATH is the big one. Now we've covered WPATH. They do not have scientific basis for their standard of care. Last year, they removed the age limits for all sex change procedures, uh, puberty blockers, breast removal surgery. They have no science behind it. In fact, recently a judge ordered WPATH to provide the medical basis for their standards, and they are viciously fighting in court. In a recent follow filing, they argued that they should not have to provide their basic standards because it will harm their organization and because it is their First Amendment privilege. Well, that's interesting. Take a look at this filing. A First Amendment privilege means that they have the freedom of speech, which they do, but they are setting medical standards. And so they're saying, if you knew how we did this, it would harm our organization irreparably. Basically, they admit they make this stuff up. And you can't see how we do it. And we do not want to submit. The judge says that they have to. And they're, again, they're fighting like hell. Uh, so this is what the government's using to make up their trans health care policy. Um, basically, all in on gender affirmation, even though there's no data that shows that once you transition somebody, they feel better or they resolve their gender dysphoria. In fact, it shows that when you sex change somebody, their anxiety gets worse. Um, likely due to the harm you're tearing up their bodies. So along with this gender affirmation is a whole buffet of sex change services offered. Here's what the military says that transgender service members may need, uh, such as speech and voice therapy, cross-sex hormone therapy, laser hair removal, voice feminization surgery, facial contouring, body oh, contouring, God. breast chest surgery, which means you cut off boobs, genital reassignment, which means you cut off testicles and penises or build one, um, and 
the likes of that. Now, laser hair removal and body contouring, they say they don't do it because they don't provide those services. Can you imagine on a military base, like time for your bikini wax, Roger? Uh, then <laughs> I can. I mean, this is what's happening. It's incredibly you want to think about why the United States military can't get recruitment. Numbers. And this is their effort, I think, to increase recruitment numbers. Like, we'll take anybody. I suppose. Um, now, the body contouring and the laser hair removal, I suppose you could say, like, it, if I'm a military member but I'm not trans, I want some laser hair removal. That sounds awesome. Why can't I have it? Right? So they don't, they say we don't do this. And so you'd have to seek it off base and we don't reimburse for that and body contouring. Cause otherwise, why wouldn't somebody say, I want some big boobs, you know, I want a butt lift or whatever. Um, they don't do well, that. With, that, with all that. With that amount of surgery, I mean, they're really missing the opportunity. We could have an army of, of, of RoboCops. I yeah. mean, that's about almost yeah. the same amount of surgery involved. You could go the Why opposite we direction. That? Yeah, you make a good point. Um, yeah, you know. It, I, I want to. I want to ask a question. Like, if if they're recruiting people and they get them in there, and like you have a drill sergeant that walks up and they're like yelling in your face, and you're like, "Sir, yes, sir," and he's like, "No, it's they, yes, they." And if I'm wearing, I'm a gender fluid, and if I have a green armband on, it's "Sir, yes, sir." If I'm wearing blue armband, yeah. it's "Ma'am, yes, ma'am." You know what I mean? Is, like, right. is that where we're going? Is this? It the flips drill totally. Sergeants? Yeah, it's going to flip Actually, totally I on the drill gonna... sergeants. Like, it's going to flip the opposite <laughs> now. The drill sergeants can be like, okay, I guess I won't open my mouth. I'll lose my job if I say anything now. Yeah. Um, they can't use they, them. They can use cross-sex pronouns. They can change them, but it can't be they, them. And there's a reason I'm going to get to it. Um, you know, with all of these things like, oh, I can't really be good at my job because I'm gender dysphoric. So as soon as someone helps me cut off my Adam's apple and speak more feminine, I'll be better. If you've ever read David Goggin's book about all of the military experiences he's had, he is dying on the inside because of all this. Now, this document, again, says they can change their pronouns, but they have to pick a gender. Doesn't have to be the one you're assigned at birth. But once you pick, you have to pick, you have to adhere to that one. And in this agreement that you sign, it says, I agree to not be a she, I'll be a he. And because I've chosen that, I will adhere to those physical fitness standards. It says that, wow. but it doesn't mean it. So I'll tell you about that later, because if That's I said, okay, I'm a he now, and then I, I cannot do a pull-up. I go to the gym, but I cannot do it. So I would flunk out, right? Or I would get whatever, like I wouldn't be able to, and there's a way to get an exception for that. Um, now it says though, even if you're transgender male, meaning biological female, you still need to get your breast and cervical screenings. And if you're a transgender female, you still need your testicular screenings. Now, this document does warn that hormone therapy comes with all kinds of potential health risks and undesired events. And but there are waivers that trans service members use to get exempts from standards of grooming. Here is this waiver, a sample waiver that you can, you know, wear female or male garments, uniforms, grooming. So, you know, how the military cut for men, um, if you change your gender, you can be exempt from that. Um, and yeah, you do can, they have military grade binders like chest binders? I wonder yeah. you can get them at the and surplus tuck, store tuck panties, tuck. military grade tuck panties. Oh my God. That Here, would be something. Here's your rucksack. Here's your foot locker. And here's your breast binders. Like that's what the U S military it's. Oh my God. Yeah. And guess now, what? It's Kevlar. Right. <laughs> now, as it relates to cross-sex hormones, something we've talked about a lot, this document says many times that these are dangerous and they have side effects, but you can get them if you've gone through all the forms, you've filled out your forms, you've seen all of the therapists, you've proven that you have gender dysphoria. Um, it also says that trans men, so females that want to get men, to be men can expect to get fatter and weaker because it, when you're on this hormone, it says you can expect an onset of body fat redistribution and de decrease of muscle mass within three to six months. These are soldiers. You guys, That's you kind of want. want them to have muscle, right? This is the opposite of super soldier serum. You're supposed to go if on your screen, you're supposed to go from the guy with the shirt to the guy with no shirt. But instead, like we're going, going from the guy with no shirt to the guy with the shirt. Yeah, we're going backwards. You're going the wrong way. You're going to Gomer Pyle, like on right. Full Metal Jacket. We're building the opposite army. 
Like we want a we want an army full of weaklings. What is the opposite of super soldier serum? Cross sex hormones. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, well, let's come up with something better than the super soldier no, serum true. is. But that's, uh, that's a great example. I mean, I no, mean, that's that's perfect. You know, it's a well, it's, it's grammatically steroid. it would be sub soldier serum. <laughs> <laughs> sub soldier <laughs> serum. <laughs> I like that. Sub soldier. Are you, where are my sub soldiers at? I don't want to go to war today. I don't want to go to, good. You don't have to. Okay. Oh my God. Now, the one thing they cannot do is use gender dysphoria as an excuse to get out of the military. So it's kind of funny because they understand that this can be used to someone's advantage. They realize that, you know, sometimes men use it to gain access to women's spaces or to get... Um, you know, an easier deal. They think that women have, they're fine with that. You can get out of the war. You can get out of the, you know, fitness standards. You can get all of all that. You can't use it to get out of the military. Take a look at this. Uh, gender dysphoria alone is not grounds to justify or support, um, you know, leaving the military basically. Um, now you can get out of on, out of deployment, though, take a look at this, is that you have up to 300 days to go through your sex change, um, after which you'll be evaluated. And if you can convince somebody you're still not doing so well, you still want to transition more or you're not doing well on this medicine, which nobody does well on this medicine, um, the doctors can then extend this non-deployable status. You can also request. Does, go ahead. Does that come out of their pay or, or do we pay for that? Like, is that something we're like, this hey, is paid we'll time. This. this is paid time. The, yeah, the, wow. it, the, you're not on like any kind of administrative leave or anything like that. You have 300 days. Um, you can also re request exemption to physical fitness tests permanently, even though when you change your sex in the deer's form, you say you'll adhere to the gendered fitness test, but then you can opt out of all fitness tests. Here's an exemption policy for like grooming, fitness testing. You can opt out of drug abuse testing because you're on heavy duty drugs if you're on cross sex hormones, um, as well as, you know, you now don't have to use the bathroom of your assigned sex. Uh, but once they're fully transitioned, why not require them to meet the minimum standards of fitness given the danger of the job? Doesn't being in good shape help keep you safe if your job is physically demanding, like fighting, combat, stuff like that. Uh, the problem is it's just not possible to allow, you can't have both things. You can't chop up someone's genitals and breasts and, uh, and sh slim down their shoulders and put them on something that causes muscle loss. Um, and then also allow them to be on sustained use of hormones that cause Headaches, memory loss, weight gain, osteoporosis, teeth that shed enamel or cracked, degenerative spinal discs, painful joints, radical mood swings, seizures, migraines, and suicidal thoughts, fibromyalgia, fertility problems, and cognitive issues. You can't adhere to physical standards, be in tip-top shape, and be doing that to a human body. Those things are mutually exclusive. Um, you would think, you know, that the military wants a soldier that is not having those experiences, but I guess they do. Here's an example of something that was posted today on uh, Libs of TikTok. Um, as I was thinking about this, this popped up. This is a biological male who is transitioning, waiting for his paperwork to come in. So while he's waiting for his paperwork, he has to still dress and act like a man. And then at the end of the, so he tells you how he deals with this, how he copes with this by putting on these sort of feminine prosthesis that make him feel feminine. Um, and then he can get on these hormones. Just, it, it's about two minutes. Take a watch. Hey y'all. So today I'm going to make a video showing how I cope with gender dysphoria while in uniform. If you don't know, when you're an active duty soldier who is transitioning genders, you have to go by the standards that align with your gender and cack and deers until that is changed. This means that because my gender is a male in khaki and deers, I cannot present as a female in uniform. I have a few ways that I find help me cope with my gender dysphoria while on duty, and I'd like to share them. I'm gonna be honest, they're not a lot, but they do help me. The first thing I do is wear clear nail polish. According to regulation, men are allowed to wear clear nail polish while on duty. When I'm in uniform, this makes me feel a bit more feminine because my hands feel pretty when my nails are painted. The second thing I do is wear feminine scents. There is no regulation for what scents you can and can't wear. Pretty self-explanatory this one. Smell feminine, feel feminine. 
I also like to put on a lip balm because my gosh. Well, it's not a gloss or anything. Unchat lips are pretty. The last thing I like to do is put a smile on my face because there is nothing more beautiful than confidence. Look, I know it's not a lot, but that's because there's not a lot you can do to be in regulation and present as your identified gender while in uniform. But this is what gets me through the day. And if you're a trans soldier, I hope it helps you. Hey y'all, my name is Private Johnson. I'm a soldier of trans experience in the United States Army. Today is my first day of starting HRT. So without further ado, Okay, My so we don't need to play this anymore because what he's going to do now is take estradiol and um, I can't remember the name of the other one, uh, the one that blocks the gender, the f male hormones, and then estradiol is what brings up the female hormones. Uh, estradiol can cause breast cancer, genital bleeding, stroke, pulmonary embolism, liver disease. This is all according to Pfizer's own website on this drug. We know how forthcoming Pfizer is about adverse events. To their drugs but they're admitting this this is a healthy soldier about to become an unhealthy soldier on taxpayer money um now you know the like painting of the nails none of that bothers me um it's until you get to something that's going to hurt you that i feel bothered about this uh you know i I would be all, all about if we wanted to like lessen our military if we were a peaceful country but we're not um, and we're out there warmongering in the world, all the while weakening the bodies of our military. Is it any wonder that enrollment is so low? Record low enrollment numbers. This was according to the Wall Street Journal just today. So is it fair to these people to not equip them properly for their job? Is it fair to make some people still adhere to physical fitness standards and not others because of ideology? Um, is it fair to give young people poison that will hurt them? Um, and not leave us safe with an army that is literally busy getting their balls and boobs chopped off. Um, so cancel Captain America. He is just too fit and sis. The military doesn't need anybody that can do this. Yeah, had I know to. Your, I know it's your favorite. He's had also to. too patriotic for the military. Had yeah, to. apparently. Yeah. Okay, uh, so let me know what you think of this in the chat. Is this fair? Is this a good thing to do? Are you happy with this? With a your lot of people say dollars? this is disgusting in the chat. Wolf Solo says this is disgusting. Um, it's awful, awful. Okay, we're done. Come on. Uh, surrender now while we're ahead. I, got, I have um, a question. Violet says did, in the chat, Violet says, come on, Redacted, this is not informative. No? Okay. Okay, we just laid out a oh, whole sure slew. Of, okay. Do they still shave the heads of everyone, and can you color it? Does, I don't know. Like... Mm. Shave the heads. Yeah. I don't know. We'll get you the uniform code so you can see about enlisting. Um, no. <laughs> you, I think uh, she's past the age. Yeah. You get the age regression Yeah, they stuff. wouldn't want me now. My steak gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, put oh. your hand down, soldier. You don't ask questions here. Oh, my God. That's shameful is what it is. All right. Well, let us know what you think of this. Uh, and if we have any interpretations you may not agree with, let us know what you think of that in the chat or any that you do. Um, and if you are an active military member or a veteran, uh, what you think of this, if you have spent your life trying to adhere to certain physical fitness standards or uh, grooming standards and you feel like, well, that's not fair. Um, I'd love to hear it. Brooke in our chat says, I do want to know about this. So thank you, Brooke. Thank you. We're trying to keep well, the mainstream I mean, media it is, is not going to cover the story. It is literally a about national security. Yeah, it's a national security story about degrading the United States military by basically saying you can get out of service, uh, f going to a war front or active um, uh, training, um, basic training, or other deployments if you're in gender reassignment surgery. This is how far our military has fallen in the United States. And in preparation for you to come back, here's something that causes uh, muscular weakness. So <laughs> Paid for well, by I mean, how, the big pharma, yeah. I bet you this will get abused too, because there's gonna be some people like, if I go into the military, I can get all this for free on the taxpayer, yeah, and then just like somehow opt out after. You can get it in Oregon though on Medicare. So well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have say to that go list that, that you far. read. The list that you read of all the procedures on the Seattle Children's Hospital website. That stuff is covered. Children's Hospital. Even laser hair removal. All of it. Oh my gosh. 
Wow. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.